Like an oasis in the desert of life comes a word so fresh from God. It's time for God's revelation to change your situation as God enables His servant, Reverend Sam Oye, to bring to you the word of hope and liberation. Why not come with us as we go into the ocean of God's revelation where definite transformation is affected by the power of His word? And now... Experience the living word with Rev. Sam Oye. Uh, I want to give you about seven downloads that will show you uh, the seven different things that God has presented before us from uh, time immemorial, particularly from the fall of man. Uh, I will show you some of the things that God has presented to us and has given us the right to choose. And that simply means whatever you choose or whichever you choose becomes a team that you belong to. And that will decide whether you'll be a winner or you'll be a loser for life. Is that okay? Number one thing that God presented to us is what we call law. And the second one he gave us, he presented to us grace. Is that okay? So you have the choice to choose to live your life as a Christian under the law. Or to choose to live your life under what? Grace. If you understand the Old Testament was written and then the people who operated under the Old Testament operated under what? Law. Is that okay? When Jesus Christ came, he came to become the fulfillment of the law that he might open up a new chapter, which is called what? Grace. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldliness that we may live soberly and righteously in this present world. Is that okay? So Jesus Christ brought grace. Somebody say grace. Now what is grace? Grace is God giving to you what you don't deserve. Is that okay? Mercy is God taking away from you what you deserve. <laughs> you and I deserve judgment because of the life we've lived and the secret things we've done, things we can't even say with our mouth. Some of us still come to church and still take some things, touch some things, go to some places that you know God doesn't want you to go to. Now mercy will say, okay, if judgment is supposed to fall on Sam, mercy will say lord suspend judgment but you see there's something about grace grace will step in and say sam god has suspended judgment from you because of his mercy but sam if you don't receive grace you will still repeat what will cause judgment to come on your life so grace comes to empower us not to go back to where we've come from are you getting what i'm saying here that's what grace comes to do that's why we used to sing this song, the things I used to do, I do them no more. The place I used to go, I go there no more since I gave my life to Christ. So what grace does is that grace ensures that we don't fall back or have a relapse to the things or into the things that we used to uh, find ourselves in. So the first thing I've been able to show you here is law and grace. So you have a choice to belong to the law team or to the grace team. Hallelujah. And I like what Paul the Apostle came to do. He began to show us the importance of joining what's up? The grace team. Is that alright? He began to show us the importance of joining the grace team. Because you see even Peter the Apostle. Some of them even though they met with Christ. They didn't understand much about the grace team. So they were children of God who were still operating legalistically. They were still operating by the law. Until Paul came and began to introduce them to grace. And so I have decided to be a fan of grace team. Praise the name of the Lord. You are very free to choose the one you want to belong to. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. Don't eat on Friday. Don't eat on Saturday. That's law. I'm not under the law. Is that okay? I'm operating under grace. Now the question is, if I'm operating under grace, does that make me to be a loose person compared to the person under law? In fact, grace plays a higher demand on you than law. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, you find out that God has presented before us what is called the blessing, a blessing and what's that? Curses. So you are free to choose whether you belong to the cursed team or you belong to what's up? The blessed team. Is that all right? And of course, I know you, I know you've already decided to be part of the blessed team. Am I having an amen in the house? Praise God. Number three, God has also presented before you life and what's up? So you're free to be part of the life team or part of death team. I've chosen life. Is that okay? God is not going to choose that for you. You've got to make a choice. Number four is what we call the kingdom of darkness 
and the kingdom of light. You've got a choice to make a choice about which of the kingdoms you want to belong to. As for Samoy and my family, we've chosen to become members or fans of the uh, kingdom of what, Sam? Light. Number what now? Five. Fantastic. It's the first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam happens to be the Adam you know. It. So he started a team. And the unfortunate thing was that almost everybody under the team of Adam, except by the mercies of God, almost all of them turned out to be losers before God. Is that all right? So there was a need to bring in a second Adam to start another team. And the second Adam came in the name of who, sir? Jesus, the son of the living God. And today he has started a team that I encourage you to be part of. Is that okay? Don't just come to the church of Jesus and not know Jesus himself. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, I hope I have time to show you some few things later. The second, the other thing, which is number what now? Number six is heaven or hell. Hmm? You've got a choice to go to heaven or you go to hell. How many of you still believe that there's hell? There's hellfire. <laughs> you still believe there's hell, right? How many of you believe that sinners will go to hell? It doesn't matter whether they are first class sinners, whether they are white sinners, black sinners, cocosoid, mongoloid, whether they are Hispanics, Latinos, African Americans, African Canadians. It doesn't matter what you are. If you're a sinner, universally speaking, you're going to go to where, sir? Hell. But then there is another team called Team Heaven. It's a, it's a place where the streets are made of gold. Hallelujah. Some of us don't have access to pure gold here on earth because some of us can't afford it. But then to the glory of God, what people prize so very much here, well, so much more, much more than that, is what will become our streets in heaven. That's what's going to be used to make the streets that we're going to walk upon in heaven. Gold and the rest of that somebody's dreaming of going there you will get there in jesus name the last thing here i want to present to you is jesus and satan you've got a choice to belong to the jesus team or the satan's team got a choice so me and my household we've chosen to become part of what's up the jesus team somebody's i'm part of the jesus team now let me quickly let you know everyone on the sound of my voice you cannot belong to and operate in the two theme teams at the same time it's not possible to say, well, I belong to Jesus' team and I'm also... <laughs> no, there's nothing like that. Is that okay? Let me just tell you what you can belong to. You can belong to Satan's team and belong to church. But you cannot belong to Satan's team and belong to Jesus. What that simply means is that you can come to church and still be a sinner. Are you getting what I'm saying here? You can come to church and still be involved yourself, involving yourself in all manner of terrible things, lying, stealing, fornication, adultery, uh, witchcraft, sorcery, going to places so you can get power to become rich and the rest of that. You can go to all those places and still come to church. You can belong to those two teams, but you cannot belong to Satan and belong to Christ at the same time. Is that all right? Light and darkness does not what? They don't mix together. Whatever team you decide for, very important, you must take note of this. They, they have, it has, both present and future consequence. Is that alright? Whatever thing you sign on for, somebody made a statement here. He said there's one reason why he doesn't want to be part of Arsenal. And it is this. He said Arsenal disappoints you when you least expect. Is that okay? Or when you expect so much from them, then they disappoint you. Now the most important thing is if you don't want disappointment and all of that, then you better figure out which of the team can you stay with that will not disappoint you in the end of the day. The point I'm trying to make is that when it comes to our walk with God, you all must realize one important thing. And it is this, that you cannot belong to the two teams at the same time, Satan and Christ. No, it's either Satan or Christ. Is that okay? And whichever decision you make, I want to quickly say that it has both present and what, sir? Future consequences. I'm sure you all know that in a team there are basic compositions. In a team you have what we call the team owner and the shareholder. Am I correct? That's what you have in a team. You have the team owner and what's the name of the team owner of uh, Chelsea? Yes. What do you call him, sir? Roman Ibrahim something like that. You heard what they said. Praise God. So how about uh, Man U? Glaze glazier family they are the owner of man you how about arsenal what's the name of their owner uh, okay arsenal holding limited free settlers french settlers okay so french settlers are the owner of arsenal is that okay now so every team has what 
there's an owner is that okay not only do you have owners you have shareholders is that all right now all the football playing and all the uh, they pay the uh, drug bar 50 million you can't comprehend what the shareholders go home with are you getting what i'm saying here you can't comprehend the glory that comes to the shareholders i hope you know that the cup for the team does not stay with the players eh? Eh? the cup normally goes back to who sir it goes to the owners they keep it there in their office so number two you also have what are called team managers coaches and associate like the medical team and all of that team manager coaches pastor john has told you that uh, what makes man you tick is the fact that they have good team managers those who uh, work on the psychology of uh, the include psychologies and the rest of that those who manage the affairs of the team properly so that they can ensure that the team operates optimally is that okay so you have team managers you have team coaches associates these are the caretakers and stewards of the team they work in agreements take note of this whether you are an Asen Wenga and Alex Ferguson or whatever it is if you are not a shareholder in that company the coach works basically to achieve the dreams of the owners and anytime you violate the desires of the owner they fire you am I correct sir if they want you to win EPL and you don't win EPL they fire you you've seen that happen over and over again so the coach answers to the owner number three you have team supporters and fan clubs these are fantastic people and that was that was why i asked you to come and cheer your team praise god so you are team fans where are the man you fans here cheerleaders where i'm seeing some women in my you so where are the arsenal fans fantastic and where are the other fans the Lord be with you. Amen to Jesus. You know, one thing I like about fans is the fact that they don't play. They, they, they don't play matches. So they don't get rewarded. That, I like that about fans. Those as in Wenga know me. Look at the way Pastor John was speaking today. I told my pastors, I have never heard Pastor John's voice as powerful as it came out today when he was talking about my you. He has preached many sermons, sometimes it's difficult for me to hear him. But today, his voice, I, I, it was there we now discovered that that's his calling. Whatever can bring his voice out like that must be his calling. Are you catching what I'm saying here? Praise the name of but you see, after all of that, look at all we've done today. Man, you doesn't know him. They don't pay you. Yesterday we were coming, uh, returning from our trip, and uh, we, when we came into Abuja, I just told uh Brochima who was driving me, I said, Look, so today is fan Sunday. I don't I don't even know what to wear for fan Sunday. I said, can you? He said, Pastor, no, 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 I'm taking you somewhere. And he took me to Sedi Plaza, Plaza where they sell sportwears and all of that. And incidentally, it turned out to be a Nike shop where the only thing they sell is Arsenal. So I was like, Lord, have mercy. Don't you have something else? And I was like, no, no, it's just uh, Arsenal and the rest of that. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know what? Don't let me tell you how much I spent to buy. By the time I got home, my wife said, have you bought your sportwear? I said, yes. And I said, baby, look, it cost me so, so, so. She said, what? what i said don't worry i said don't worry i said it's because of where we went to they removed the price of the shop so <laughs> worry woman she immediately began to tell me the one i bought for so so, so person 1500 naira and you are coming to tell me that you are buying something for 10,500 12,600 bought a car for how much at the end of the day, I said, oh, what kind of, what, was I a mumu that I went to this? <laughs> when I look at all the money that I spent, you know what, sir? For every of these ones that are actually um, under Nike, the money I am paying is actually going back to the club. A part of it goes to uh, Nike for marketing. 
a major part of it goes back to the club. So I am a fan of the club and I'm paying the club to be a fan of the club. Isn't that fantastic? Now they don't know me. They don't pay me. Hallelujah. If there's a fight that breaks out in the stadium, if you break your head, you just broke it for nothing's sake. If somebody breaks your leg, your as and when God will show up and say, Sorry, we lent you at an arsenal fan and they broke your leg. We came here to fix the leg back. You will fix it yourself. People have died. Am I correct, sir? In pursuit of club, in defending club, fans, they have died. Who cares about them? Who pays their family? <laughs> I'm sure you will reconsider fanship today. Amen. Sir, I saw something in the UK and it is this. There are people literally will travel. Will travel from the United Kingdom and they will go to Germany, go to France, just to go and watch their club. Now, they will pay the fare. I learned for one of the matches, I learned that a particular, an, an individual decided to sell his house because he must watch this match. Sold this house to go and watch Champions League because his team is in the final. And at the end of the Champions League, the team now bought him a bigger house. Is that what you heard? He came back now and started looking for another mortgage. Yeah, he got mortgage, yeah? Mortgage. <laughs> Their life is always mortgage. <laughs> That's why I encourage you, if you're trying to run abroad, you better stay here. We don't do mortgage here. We buy houses outrightly. We pay cash. Take your money. Amen? I do mortgage. 22 years, you see they pay money. You never pay finish. Your children are also coming to join the queue. We pay flat here. Praise God. It's your carrying credit card and all this nonsense. Don't stress yourself. If you are going abroad, go read. Go there, come back. This is where God is now. Wait, wait a minute. Listen. When I used to hear ministers say that kind of thing, I say, no, no, they don't want us to travel they, because they have traveled and all of that. I say, I have traveled. I have, there's, man, forget it. I saw beggars on the street of California. I saw homeless people in New York. Broad street. I saw homeless people in New York. Rain was falling in winter. And they were using nylon to cover themselves. And you think if you just transport yourself from here by enemy, for whether I follow Libya, so long as I land in Spain, my life will be changed. A lizard will become a big lizard in Spain. Touch your neighbor, say, I hope you are not planning to run again. Go abroad, go and do holiday. Hallelujah. I've noticed something, sir. You know all these white people? There's something I know about white people. White people, there's something generally, because some of them trust generationally, there's been some culture that have been passed across to some of our white brethren. And so some of them grew up to a little bit be racist. But then, by and large, right now, there's a diffusion of culture going all over the world. So the racism is really going down. But there's something I found out about white people. You see, when they see a black person who has money, they will start calling you, sir. You get to London and you carry money, or go to America, carry money. You are, they, particularly, they like Nigerians. Because they know any time we show up in their shops, uh, they know cash will flow that day. I remember one of the shops I went to, and I just I was buying shirts for my pastors, and I was all buying shirts. I bought quite a number of shirts. You know, as and uh, you know, and there was, how much is it? I'll bring out my wallet because that's where I kept all the pounds. I'll bring out my wallet and I just look. I just noticed one of the women just went quietly to a phone center. Hello, you know. She's trying to alert security. <laughs> she can't believe I'm sending that kind of money. They don't make it like that there. They don't make it there. See, she's my spending money like this here. And I look at her. I was waiting for the policeman to come. To come at me and say, hello, sir. Uh, please, can you explain your source of income? Ha, 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 ha. Baba. If you stay where God wants you to be, to stay, you will blow some water is in the wilderness. <laughs> Come on, somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And you know one thing about blessed people, sir, wherever they are, they blow some. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Take a blessed man to Damaturu, he will blow some. Take a blessed man to Sokoto, he will blow some. 
take a blessed man to Cameroon, he will blossom because it is not the place that makes the man, it is a man that makes the place. I ask you a question. This Abuja that is so expensive today, did Abuja make Abuja expensive? No. It was when people began to arrive and then the kind of people that settle in a place decide how much that place goes for. When a governor comes and buy a land here, another governor comes to buy a land here, another deputy governor comes to buy a land here, because three governors are come to buy land here, automatically it has changed the demographics of that place. Those who believe in there. The price. Will, so land doesn't make people. The place doesn't make people. People make the place. So team supporters are cheerleaders. They get their satisfaction from their team's success. When their team win, my you win, Pastor John is excited. But it does not translate into any financial benefit. Nothing. Won't pay school fees. <laughs> Praise God. But then the last set of people I want to quickly talk about are what I call team players. Is that okay? In every team, as wonderful as the coach and the managers are, you see the team players are very critical. You know why? For this reason. They, this particular team players, are the ones who bring in their skills. They bring in their talents, their knowledge, their time, and they support in carrying out the team's task. They perform the assigned tasks so that the, the agreed team's goal can be achieved. Beyond that, they get their work done, sometimes at the risk of their lives. These are the real members of a team, the one you call players. They get paid, protected, and provi provided for by their team owners. Is that okay? Because they are players and not spectators. They are players and not fans. Is that okay? So they get paid for. If anything, you remember when Kanu was going to have, when he had a heart problem. You understand that? If Kanu was a fan, who developed heart, heart problem for watching Arsenal? <laughs> By now, you should know where Kanu will be. You, you understand that? But because he was a player, somebody's a player. You see, by virtue of the fact that he signed in to be a player, he has signed in to be a member. And by virtue of the fact that he has chosen to become a member of a team, what that simply translates into is that his personal needs are cared for. He is protected. Security people go with them except when they go out on their own. Are you getting what I'm saying here? They are highly provided for. The point I'm trying to make here is that beyond being a fan, and you know we have the same in church today. We have people who are excited about a church and they are not members of the church. <laughs> and you see in the house of God, you are not covered outside your membership. You are not covered. And you see just like for you to become a team player or a member of a team, you must have some contract. The same thing with us, we enter into what we call soul contract to become a member of the body of Christ. What does that mean? I come to Jesus and I say, I accept you as my Lord and my WhatsApp personal savior not only that we move forward and then we take communion amen we take communion we take the bread and the wine what are we doing sir we are signing a contract saying that look we are going to serve you for life and as we choose now to become members of the body of christ we become players we bring in our skill you, you don't belong to a church. You don't belong to the body of Christ if you are not bringing in your skill. You are not bringing in your abilities. You are not bringing in your talent. You are not moving the team forward. Something is fundamentally wrong. Real team members and team players bring in their skills, their talents, and sometimes at the risk of their life, they do all they can for the team to go forward. And that's what God is calling us for. If you look at the Matthias of those days, as I begin to round up, if you begin to look at the Matthias, those who brought us the gospel, some people, some people have to give up their lives for this gospel to get to you and I. Am I correct? These are people who have sold out themselves for the team. Now here you are, you and I, we can't go out and preach today because we are ashamed that our friends will not have, you may have yeah, me too, I'm born again. But then people gave up their lives. To show their loyalty to their teams. 
Am I talking to somebody here? And that's what God is calling you and I into. Now let me quickly say this and as I begin to close. The blessing flows through membership. Just like provision in any club flows through becoming a team player. When you become a player, the money of the team begins to flow to you. Am I correct? The provisions begin to flow to you. The same thing with the kingdom of God. When you become a child of God, then you now begin to have access to the blessing. The blessing flows through membership. It flows through you becoming his child. Not just a member of his church. Because like I said, in this church, there are two kinds of people. There are members of the body of Christ and there are members of this local assembly. When the rapture takes place, when Jesus comes and stays in the sky to take us home, the moment the trumpet sounds, you are going to see something happen in church here. Let me not point which seat will remain and which one will vanish. You're just like that. You know, choir members, all my choir members will be in heaven in Jesus' name. You, you don't have it. You better say big amen this almost afternoon. <laughs> now, choir members will be singing in another church. You see choir members, they are singing, oh, soprano, somebody's so hard leaping. Oh my God. Ooh. And, and while they are doing that, and the backup two is backing up, and the keyboard is playing, about three keyboards, you know, one is playing, the other is, yeah. and bam, the trumpet sounds. And then one keyboard is goes, and the other one is still playing. Another choir members, the, suddenly the lead singer will notice, come on choir, give me, choir say, and they've gone. I pray to happen on a Sunday. You can't say amen now. You can't say amen, but you know why you can't go. One man said, Pastor, pray for me. I said, What happened? He said, I had a dream. The rapture took place. I said, Hey, eh? he said, Pastor, I noticed you have gone. I said, You don't expect to see me here. I, uh, if you saw me here, you had a bad dream. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Now watch us carefully. Because I'm a member of the body. So wherever Jesus appears, I will show up there. Are you hearing what I'm I know that one? That's not a prayer point. And I said, what happened? Why are you, why are you this uh, worried? And he said, Pastor, I saw myself going. I was going. That's how I was saying it. I was going. And then suddenly, something just dropped me. Bam. <laughs> Somebody say something. Somebody say something. In my place, the number says something. If you come from Warrior and they say something, they pursue you. So <laughs> he said that thing pulled me back. back. And he said, when he came back on the floor, he was like, Ah, Lord, why didn't I go? And God said, How about that envy? Only envy. Because of envy, you are not you can't, you are not a part of that member, that body. You will not be part of it. You have been a fan all the while. You have been a Jesus fan all the while. You've not been a member of the team of Jesus. You have never, you wear our t-shirt, but you don't belong to us. Just like I wear Arsenal, I don't belong to Arsenal. I wear their cap, I paid for it. The players play for the team and get paid. Me, I joined the fan club and I'm the one paying for joining the fan club. I am spending and not getting. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? And that thing brought him down. Bam! And the man said, Lord, what? He said, envy. Because of envy. And I'm just imagining that the rapture just takes place now. Lord have mercy. Can, can you go on the rapture sound for me? Trumpet. Oh my God. Rapture is about to take place. I just pray to happen on a Sunday. Amen. All my ministers, I, all of you will go in Jesus. You don't have a choice. You imagine a church where the pastors are all seated, the men of God, all everybody cross it. <laughs> and then ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh -huh. it will be louder than that. Oh. The Bible says it will be uh -huh. thank you. The Bible says it will be the sound of an archangel. One archangel sound will reverberate through the whole earth. So it's not an ordinary sound. And then boom, people, the Bible says in before you twinkle your eye. People are gone, just like that, gone. And as we have been, as we have been translated from the earth, we have been trans tra transfigured. 
our bodies are taking on immortality. Ah, because now we are about to join him to whom we belong. Now we are about to join him whose team we have been playing in on the earth. Whose team we have been giving our skill, our time. That's why as many of us who are graduates, Pastor John, engineer, Pastor Isaiah, businessman, Pastor Sunday administrator, and we have so many people here, all of us come to say, Lord, uh, irrespective of our degrees, we bring our skills to you. We bring our talents to you. We bring our singing ability to you, Lord, because we joined the Jesus FC. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? We joined the Jesus team. We belong to his team. We are giving him our time. We are giving him our resources. We are giving him everything because we know the Bible says in the twinkling of an eye. The Bible said the trump of the Lord will sound and the dead that have been there shall raise up and those of us who are alive shall be caught up with him. And the Bible said we shall be with him forever because we have always been his members. He has been looking forward to the time when he will take us and present us to his father, the real owner of the club because Jesus is a major shareholder because he donated his blood for you and I to join the team. The father is the owner of the club. Am I to somebody here and here we are children of God the only thing that brings joy to God is that we win on earth as we win on earth the trophy is not to us that's why we don't brag about whatever we do for God we always give the trophy back to the Lord whatever God does for me father I give you the glory whatever God is doing in my life father I give you the glory because the club always owns the trophy let the trophy that you are getting in life always go back to your owner. Am I talking to somebody here? As I begin to close, let the trophy begin to go back to him. People praise you for speaking so well. Take that, take that trophy and say, Father, they've just praised me, but I praise you. Oh, people just appreciated you now because you're such a good writer, Father. Uh, they've just praised me. I couldn't tell them, shut up, Lord. But you know in my heart, I'm not taking that praise. I give it back to you, Lord. Father, for this little thing, I think people are celebrating me. Lord, I give it all back to you. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? You imagine by any stroke of the imagination that a man on the day his team wins a match decides and says, look, my team, I refuse to let you carry this cup. And take it to the company or to take it to the owners it must stay in my house because i scored the goal that will be the last goal you will score for that company or for that particular team because the trophy belongs to the owners is there anybody here who wants to give the trophy back to the master is there anybody here who wants to say lord i'm not just a i'm not just a fan of jesus you know let me tell you something pastor let me, let me tell you what I saw here. If you say something about fans, which is what I really uh, fancify, if it ever makes any sense. Now, one thing about fans is that they come to the stadium, but they don't enter the pitch. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody here? They come to the stadium, huh, but they can't enter the pitch because that's how far they can go. Am I talking to somebody here? So all they do is to spectate, watch and see others perform. I have made up my mind that until I leave the earth, I, I, I will never, never sit at the spectator's seat. Am I talking to somebody here? Watching people serving God and then they are going with the joy and I'm clapping my hands for them. What am I living my life for? Am I talking to somebody here? I live to please him. I live to serve him. I live to know him. I live to give him my very best. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody in the house of the Lord. Don't waste your life as a fan. The time has come to become a member of this particular team. That's where the true joy is. That's where the true satisfaction is. Become a member of the team of Jesus. It's time to join him. The Bible said to him that is joined to the living. The Bible said there is hope uh, to him that is joined to the living there is hope please let me touch some persons around you and tell them stop being a fan become a member yeah and now i'm about to start praying for you praise the name of the lord there's something i know the blessing is always pastor if you look at the fans and you look at the players by the time the match is over you will know who carries the blessing 
Am I talking to somebody here? Special dinners are organized for players. When the president wants to see the winning team, he invites the players and their coaches. He does not invite the fans. When it's time for the president to see the winning team, they tell the fans to hang around. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? The day is coming and the time is near when suddenly we shall have an invitation from the king of kings the lord of lords he may call you by death you may live here by death or he may call us all home by rapture but the point is when he calls us will you be among those who will march gallantly into the place where the king will be receiving the winning team let me say something here sometimes in order to win a match sometimes you get injured i notice sometimes when a team wins their match they are holding their trophy they have plaster on their faces some blood all over their shirt but in any case they are still the winning team you may have faced some battles while you're here on earth but if you hold on to jesus soon and very soon we are going to see the king i don't know what you're going through right now you may have been battered bruised and you may have faced some major traumas in your life whatever it is if you can hold on to jesus for the bible said looking on to jesus us, the author and the finish of our faith who for the joy that was set before us he endured the cross it's time to transit from just being a fan of Jesus from just being a spectator clapping for the choir clapping for the ushers clapping for pastor clapping for other Bible study teachers when will you get on the beach and begin to play for the master let me quickly say here that every team members that I know particularly in team jesus here there's something they bring down they bring to the team their gifts their talents their ability just to make sure team jesus wins am i talking to somebody here they don't hold back you don't see ronaldo on the field holding back you don't see rooney holding back they are passionate about their team because this is a team that will feed them this is a team that will protect them. This is a team that will decide the future of their children. Are you aware of what I'm talking about? Do you know that these people give their all to their team because they know the benefits that it brings to them and to their children's children? Beloved of the Lord, if natural teams can do that, what do you think belonging to team Jesus will do? My children's children are safe because of the role that i'm playing in jesus team today am i talking to somebody in the house of god if you are a preacher in the church keep on preaching if you are a singer in harvest house keep on singing if you are a cleaner in the church of god nobody sees you but the master will reward you am i talking to somebody because you see in the football team it's not everybody that is visible leona mercy is the one you know more in fc barcelona rooney you know much about him in manu but you see there are people at the back Am I talking to somebody here who determined the victory of the team? They are not so celebrated. They are not well known, but they decide the victory of the team. What you are doing for God, your pastor may not know. What you are doing for God, people may not celebrate. In fact, the more you do for God, the more people will look down on you. But I challenge you in the name of the Lord to keep your hands on the plow and make up your mind that you will not go back. Am I talking to anybody in the house of God? God. We are sold out to Jesus, man of God. We gave our lives to him several years ago and we made up our mind that come rain, come sunshine. Bless me with money or no money, I will serve you. Whether I have a child or I don't have a child, I will serve you because my God is not to be worshipped because of what he does, but because of who he is. That's why we pay our tithes. We pay our tithes to show our allegiance to Team Jesus. Now, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, God said something to me when the servant of God was speaking. He said, Every man pays tight. Yeah. Yeah. Every man on earth pays tight. And I said, Lord, how can you say that? And the Lord said to me, Whether you know it or not, you are paying tight. Is that okay? Now, listen, it's either God is collecting it from you. Or Satan is collecting it from you regularly. Now the funny thing about the tithe Satan collects from you is that it normally comes with pain. He takes it by force and more than the tithe. 
in form of money getting missing in form of you wrongly investing somewhere you you've been paying tight you don't even know and the lord said to me the tight you pay is a tax you pay for living on earth and breathing the air that i give to you freely do you pay for the air you breathe free gift so as members of the team we pay our tight we honor the lord as members of the team we give to the building of his house because it's his house not my house as members of the team we reach out and talk to others who have been on the fan side to become partakers of what's going on in the house lift your hands everybody in the house i want to pray why don't you begin to speak to god and say father from today i choose not to be a fan anymore of jesus i want to be a member of the jesus team i want to be a child of god i want to be a child of god lord i want to i want to really serve you I don't want to be on the spectator side uncovered by your divine insurance lord i want to be covered by your mercy I want, to, I want to be sure that at the end of the day, Lord, I receive my pay from you. Well done, that good and faithful servant. I want to make sure that your protections are over my life. Your, your provisions are constantly at my disposal, Lord. I'm tired of coming to church and not joining the real church. I give my heart to you, Jesus. I surrender all to you. Come on, somebody. I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will ever love all oh, and trust in His presence. Present daily. Somebody said, I surrender. I surrender. Oh. Somebody said, I, I for listening if you enjoyed this episode and you would like to help support the podcast through your giving and donations kindly click on the donate button or visit www.samoyepodcast.com don't forget to join us daily for the prophetic prayer hour with rev sam oye via youtube channel at rev sam oye also if what you desire is a change in your faith family and financial life then experience the unraveling ministry of reverend sam oye by being in any of our online transforming services log on to www.thetransformingchurch.org for details you can also follow me on instagram facebook youtube and on twitter at rev sam oye thanks again i'll see you in the next episode